let's start the show with the story of the Darlington nurses because it's taken a turn in recent days. We have Roger Risker from Christian Concern on the line. Roger, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on with you. Uh, let's start with the backstory for people that are unfamiliar with the story. Um, this group of nurses in Darlington were faced with the decision of, of, well, not really their decision, but it was being pushed upon them that a trans woman, so a man who was acting as a woman, was invading their personal space. What was their reaction to the situation? Well, I mean, they were they were taken aback. Um, it, it was more than the five. The five are representative of people who are bringing a claim, but there was 26 who wrote uh, to the department head. Uh, so you had women here who, you know, some of them had suffered sexual abuse, and so being in the presence of a man changing uh, brought them to tears. It, it made them relive their trauma. Uh, this was an operating department practitioner who went by the name of Rose, who um, was not on any hormones, um, was was open about trying to get his girlfriend pregnant, who apparently stared lewdly, uh, made comments like, why aren't you changing yet? And, you know, as, as any woman in a safe space in that in that environment would feel, it was it was appalling. It, it was it was an abuse of, of their private space. Um, so I won't ask you to comment on this, but some might say that's perverted behavior a man who's clearly living his life as a man if he's trying to get his his wife or girlfriend pregnant um invading a woman's safe space and asking her when she's going to change that people could say that's perverted now what was the hospital's response when these 26 nurses said this made them uncomfortable they said that they, i mean their belief was that the women um who had been subjected to this horrible horrible treatment were in a sense in the wrong that they needed to be re-educated that they needed to be inclusive and to to really know what a woman was um and they were you know the, the five in particular who brought the claim uh, because of the policy of this particular trust which was that if if you were not inclusive in, in a changing room or toileting facility you're welcome to use a different facility and, and that's what happened they were put in a, a basically a, a very tiny locker room with with no dignity you can't even call it a locker room. it was one chair one hook it was a storage closet um, they've been there since, um, and that was the response of the trust. The trust put on the female changing room door a sign with a rainbow flag, which said that this is an inclusive space, uh, and with a side note saying, "Don't do not remove this note," um, which is clearly harassment, clearly referring to what had happened in that changing room, clearly meant to uh, attack the women who had been complaining. This is awful. So not only is a man invading women's spaces, but the trust, the people who run the organization, who are supposed to be looking after the welfare of their employees, is doing the exact opposite and forcing this man upon them. Uh, and, and not only that, they're pushing an ideology by putting the rainbow flag up there, which is about sexuality, not about gender. So there's some confusion going on there too. Now, at what point did women's spaces have to become inclusive? Surely the whole purpose of a changing room is that it's a single sex space. It protects women, it protects men. It makes everyone who's maybe potentially vulnerable, or like you said, some of them may have trauma or other issues, but it doesn't matter if they have or haven't. It makes them safe in that environment, knowing that they're going to get changed around other people that are of the same sex as them. When did it become some kind of law or, or is it a bylaw of the trust that they have to be inclusive in exclusive spaces? Do you want the legal answer to that? Because the legal yeah. answer is never, oh. never, never. It's, never, it's not the law that um, same-sex spaces, single-sex spaces can be um, violated in that sense. So there are laws on on um, protecting gender reassigned individuals from harassment, but policies like changing rooms, um, there is justification defenses for policies saying, even if we accept that you're a trans person, and, and in this case, I wouldn't accept under the terms of what gender reassignment is in the Equality Act, I would not accept that this individual is gender reassigned for the purposes of the law. But there's a justification saying, look, if it's to protect the dignity and the safety of these women, women, then we are going to keep it a single space, sex space, without allowing uh, people who identify as women in there. And, and that's what the law is. So this is a, a complete outrage. But also, Roger, there has to be some pragmatism involved here. Surely if there's a small closet that they've turned into a changing room that only has one hook, one chair, enough room for 
one person, it sounds like. And there's a room full of women who are uncomfortable with a man entering their changing rooms. Surely th this man, however he wants to identify, could be given the new changing room. Yeah, you'd think. And the vast majority of even the, the trans campaigning guidance suggests that that is a fix to, to provide an alternative neutral changing space for an individual so that they don't feel discomfort, um, but that they don't uh, cause distress to people uh, in, in that changing room based on biological sex. That That is a fix. It was not used here. And in fact, the specific trust uh, in their documentation, as I said earlier, has the policy that if you are so bigoted as to not accept that this gentleman or, or any person like him is a woman, then uh, you will be changing in that room with one chair and one hook. I find it fascinating that uh, the, the law provides protection for the, for the trans person. Of course, nobody wants anyone to be harassed or intimidated, but it doesn't seem to pr provide protection protection for the women who are feeling distress and discomfort at this situation. So so five of these 26 nurses filed this case. What's been the result of the case so far? Well, I mean, the case, it's a case for harassment and, and sex discrimination. Um, it's, it's still before the tribunal. It was only filed recently, but obviously the public outcry has been tremendous. There's been an outpouring uh, on behalf of, of, of these women. Uh, one of them, as you mentioned, was J.K. Rowling, who's been brilliant. <laughs> she's she's recently put out some some tweets which are, are just hilarious, specifically regarding uh, the Unison Union boss, uh, who who you know because of his bigotry towards these women um, and coming out, you know, suggesting that they were bigoted, uh, was posting some stuff. He put his his uh, his uh, status to private, and uh, J.K. Rowling went after him about why does he have a right to privacy and these women don't. So, she, I mean, she's just a, a brilliant warrior on this issue. That is very good. And she is fantastic on this. But it's a good point. So Mr. North, the Unison boss, the I mean, again, everyone who's supposed to protect these women is failing at every hurdle. So the union is supposed to protect these nurses. The whole point of the unions is to provide a buffer between the employee and the employer. But the union is taking the side of the trust, it seems, and calling the nurses, the ones who need support, the ones who are vulnerable, calling them bigots. And he's th therefore locked his account down because he's, he's been called out on that. So who is supporting these women? Well, I mean, Christian Legal Center is certainly supporting these women. Um, there are a great deal of, of uh, champions on this issue. You know, the Riley Gaines of the world who want to protect women in, in sports, in their private spaces, in, in, in those type of situations. Um, those type of people have come out strong on behalf of, of the Darlington Five. And just, you know, the people with common sense, uh, people who enjoy their privacy, who understand what these women are going through, which is the vast majority of people have, have had outpourings of sympathy for these uh, ladies from Darlington. And am I right in understanding that the ladies have set up their own union now? They have, they have, um, which I think is is important from a legal perspective because the ACAS guidance um, allows you when there's a disciplinary situation, for example, to be represented by a union member, uh, someone who's certified to do so. Uh, and so they have set up a union uh, with representatives of, of their interests in the truest sense so that they don't have to deal with individuals uh, like Mr. North. And I think it's a, it's a brilliant move and uh, I hope more People in these situations uh, who are facing these type of ideological attacks do the same because there certainly is a, a chasm, it seems, between the union bosses and woke policies and what their workers are actually experiencing on the ground level. As a Christian, I would say men and women are different. They are distinct. Uh, they are not interchangeable. Um, they are complementary. They complement each other, and they are, that's a good thing. Men are different. Uh, men provide strengths in ways that women don't, and women provide strengths in ways that that men don't. But one of the roles for men is to protect women and children. And it's Mr. Rose failed in that regard. Mr. North failed in that regard, and the trust failed in that regard. So I'm thankful that the Christian Legal Center once again stepped in the void to uh, to to do the right thing. How can people who are watching this, who are outraged by this situation, help? Well, I mean, we invite them to the website, www.christianconcern.com, uh, uh, to, to know more about the case, know more about how to support the case. Uh, and obviously, beyond that, writing letters to the trust, um, letters to editors of newspapers who do these stories, 
and just in any way using their social media platforms to show support for these ladies because um, law is downstream from culture and if the culture finds these practices abhorrent the law will change eventually absolutely can we name and shame the trust absolutely yeah it is the county durham and darlington nhs foundation trust the hospital is the darlington memorial a hospital okay. Thank you for that. And thank you for everything you're doing, Roger. It's it's wonderful work that you and the Christian Legal Center are doing and Christian Concern. Uh, keep being warriors for Christ and common sense. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you for watching my Common Sense Crusade. If you'd like to watch the whole show, you can subscribe to lotuseaters.com for as little as £5 per month, and then you get access to a bank of content as well. My show is 3 p.m. every Thursday. See you there. Day as fault.